Good morning everyone, very late start today. So, I'm on a mission. That mission I'll let you know when I get to the uh, point of interest and get what I'm going to get. So, a little bit cryptic at the moment, but yeah, I'm heading off on a two week trip. So we quite a few episodes. Stick around. My name's Mick and welcome to Oztrax 4x4. So I just pulled over to have a bit of a stretch and grab a drink out of the fridge. And I was gonna pull into the servo just up here, but there's a big crane putting the roof on. So that's no good, that's not gonna help me. Um, done 134 Ks so far. I left really late, way too late actually, about four hours later than I was gonna. And uh, yeah, I think I might make my campsite by nightfall. Maybe, we'll see how we go. Um, other than that, I'll keep on going. Just a bit of an update guys, still traveling along. I'm probably about 80 k's out of Port Augusta at the moment. I've got the uh, Flinders Ranges over to my right here. It's a really low cloud, which was really cool. So I flipped the camera around. You might be able to see that. Um, yeah, looks kind of awesome really low cloud um, it's kind of wet up here so if we were to camp up here you'd be uh, pretty damp so that's where we're at at the moment um, I've got a quarter of my sub tank left done 251 kilometers and uh, that's about it to report at the moment so not a whole lot happening yeah, once I get to Port Augusta, I'll hop out for a five or ten minute break and uh, then I'll work out how far I've got to go to get to my campsite. As I said, I'm probably going to rock in in darkness or just on darkness somewhere. Um, but in saying that, it was around about a six hour drive from home and I've been going for what, two and a half hours? So. I might make it before darkness, but we'll see how we go. Um, other than that, cruise is going pretty well. Um, nothing to report, nothing's going wrong, no weird noises. Um, and yeah, that's about it really. Got the UHF crackling in the background there, just to keep an eye on uh, anything that's going on. And uh, yeah, that's it. I'll be back with you soon when I hit Port Augusta. I'm way behind schedule today, the sun's setting, I'm 37 k's from my stop for the night and it's going to be dark when I set up, so you can see sunsets out there and um, yeah it's going to be a cold night I reckon and I can see rain and patches coming through as well, so we'll see how all that goes. Um, yeah, I didn't want to be driving at this time of the night either. It's when the kangaroos start coming out. And I uh, don't want to have a kangaroo strike. So we'll see how we go. Um, I'll update you when I get to camp and I'll get the awning set up and my swag set up at least. I actually haven't eaten today either. Um, which is kind of annoying, but that's my own fault. So. Um, yeah, what I'm going to have for dinner, I'm not sure yet. I'll have to see. I think I've got a couple of snags uh, in the fridge. I'll just do a couple of those between bread on my, on my butane burner. No time to gather any firewood for tonight. Um, yeah, and that's where, where we are at. So, yeah, all right. I'll keep pushing on and I'll be back probably when it's dark. All right, I've literally like rocked into camp here at about seven o'clock at night. I'm set up, which is not too bad. 
Um, I've got an awning wall up for a windbreak. I've only got the one wall, but it'll do for the moment. And I'll just set my swag up just back in here. And if it rains, I'm not going to get wet, which is good. Um, yeah, time to cook some food um, after I've set up my swag. And I am starving. So I reckon it's going to be those snags for sure. All right, guys, I'm just done with dinner now. Um, packed everything up. I've reorganized my tubs. And yeah, this campsite I'm at, I'll show you in the morning, uh, is one that I used for my Central Australia tour video. Um, it's not marked anywhere. It's strictly bush camping here. There's no other vehicles. Um, pretty quiet and secluded. It's not one I'm going to share just yet. Maybe when I do a Patreon, I will sort that out. But if you haven't seen my Central Australia tour videos, if you click just up here, um, you'll see the campsite there. But I'll show you in the morning anyway. But yeah, pretty much now. It's what? What's the time? 8.44 at night. I'm probably going to go to bed shortly. Uh, I've done everything I need to do. And, um, yeah, it'll just be a nice good sleep tonight after the long drive today, getting into camp late. Other than that, um, yeah, everything went well. Cars going flawless. No issues. Um, only thing is I'm using about 15 litres per 100 Ks. Now, I think that's to do with injectors and injector pump being so old. Um, and possibly the roof box on the roof could be a potential issue too. Um, but yeah, I have to test it out when I take that back off when I get home. Um, yeah, other than that, I'll show you in the morning. Um, other things here, I do have a new voltmeter now. So this one you can read, no worries. So I've got a fully charged battery. When the fridge cycles in and out, it drops down. Uh, I've got a few trucks and stuff going past right now. Um, I've got a sensor light on the car here as well. So if anyone decides anything or anyone decides to come into camp, I've got this little sensor light here, I do that, and bam, the light comes on. And it lights up a fair way too out here. So pretty safe in there. As you can see, you just got a couple of lights running. Can't really see much at night time. No one can get past on the other side. Because I've got my spare wheel there, which is in this corner. So spare wheel's in that corner there. So tubs, everything's all organized in the back here. Just gonna finish off my can of Sprite and uh, probably hop into bed. So, and uh, yeah, that, that's it there. So, all right guys, I will catch you all in the morning. Good morning, everyone. Was that a cold night or what? That was ridiculous. So yeah, it's about quarter to eight at the moment and everything is just wet. So I'm gonna have to stick around for a little bit and wait for everything to dry out before I pack up. Um, but yeah, I'll show you the campsite as I said I would. So this is where I am at the moment. So Big campsite, sun's just come up not too long ago. This is the setup here. <clears throat> so sway's a little bit damp inside from condensation, that's about normal. Um, other than that, yeah, it was good. You see everything's soaking at the moment. Yeah, I'll let it dry up. Might have something to eat, we'll see how we go. And uh, yeah, once I pack up, I'll pick up and get going. And on to my next location, which I think is going to be Colgara uh, tonight. I might actually stay somewhere. But we'll see. I might be able to push on a little bit further. Um, yeah, there we go. Let's go check out this van. So last time I was here, um, 
Uncle Pete and I discovered this van up the back here when I just went for a bit of a fly with the drone. So, we could have a look and check it out while everything's still drying off. This is it here, riddled with bullet holes. Someone's been having some fun. Little cans and stuff down here as well, in the bushes. So yeah, we worked out that this was an old comma van. CO double M ER. Engine still in it. So we reckon this is like 50s or something, maybe, maybe even later. I'm not gonna climb in it or anything. That's what we reckon it is anyway. If you agree, leave it down in the comments. But yeah, this, this is the old girl here, so. Not people been trying to hit the lock, have they? Yeah, and getting that open. So, she's been out here a long, long time if it's this rusty. Very cool though. Something different, that's for sure. In the back. I guess if you were stranded and you came across this, you'd sleep in it somehow. It's on a bit of an angle though, but you'd make it work. Yeah, there we go. Well, I'm gonna head back to the car, which is that way. See it from here and um, hopefully stuff's starting to dry out by now and I can start packing up and get moving. So, we'll see how we go. All right, back with you when I'm on the road. I'm all packed up. Uh, I had to pack everything up wet. It just took way too long to dry. I think it's about 10 o'clock now. Um, so yeah, I'm way late to get on the road. Usually about eight or nine I'm on the road. Uh, yesterday was 11 o'clock, so I'm doing better by an hour. So maybe I'll make it into camp tonight at a reasonable hour. Um, but yeah, that's where we're at at the moment. Rig's doing all right, just warming it up. Um, I had a 20 litre water, which is all this here. I had to dump it because it was leaking. So I've got another 20 litre um, jerry that doesn't leak, so that's fine. I'll just have to make sure I fill up when I need to fill up. So um, yeah, other than that, all good. On my way to Colgra. So there's one thing I want to talk about while I just had a reminder there. Um, a lot of the roadkill in Australia. So generally when you're traveling the outback roads here, you're going to come across kangaroos and foxes, which were an introduced pest, and, uh, and rabbits and things like that. So um, it's normal to find uh, dead kangaroos and foxes and rabbits on the side of the road. But what surprised me yesterday and um, yeah, I'll give you some advice on this one too, is our wedge-tailed eagles. Now they have a huge wingspan. Um, and when they're on the road, it takes them a little bit to take flight. So if you do see one on the road, slow down and um, beep your horn. Give it time to get off the road and take flight. Otherwise you're gonna clean them up and they're an awesome bird. They're our biggest uh, eagle in Australia. And uh, yeah, I don't want to see too many more dead ones because I saw two yesterday on the side of the road, so which isn't cool. But that's something to think about anyway, guys. Um, 
when you're traveling in the outback Australia. All right, just hit Cooper Pedy. And here's the uh, big truck that everyone likes to take photos in front of. So it doesn't really help when you've got someone parked there, but is what it is. Uh, I'm not taking a photo myself, I've done it before. Maybe I'll do it on the way back. Um, I've got to come back this way anyway. Possibly, we'll see. Uh, I'm just going to get some fuel and I'll push on to Colgara, which is another four hours 16. It's what, 12.30 now, so I'll make it in at a reasonable hour, which should be good. And uh, yeah, we'll keep going from there. So time to get some fuel and then uh, head on up. Bit of an update. I am two and a half hours out of Colgara. Um, 250 k's to go and yes yeah, pretty boring drive not really much to report today um, I'm not too far out of Marla either I believe for about 80 or 70 k's out so I'll stop there and have a little bit of a break for five minutes and then I'll head off again and uh, yeah I'll get back to you when I hit the Northern Territory border and um, yeah, cross over into the Northern Territory. Um, weather's not bad, though I'm seeing some dark clouds now starting to come in. But nothing looks like it's raining at the moment, which is good. Um, so yeah, let's keep pushing on. Plenty of cars on the road, plenty of grey nomads. Um, yeah, lots of caravans and camper trailers and I will say though that the uh, most common vehicle brand out here is the Toyota Land Cruiser. I've seen maybe three patrols total, so it goes to show which is the more reliable vehicle um, for sure. So I think Desert Race is also on this weekend. I'm probably not going to go to that now. Uh, it's just too hard to get into and to try and find a spot and you're locked in I think for four days or something you can't move because the, uh, you'll be right next to the racetrack that's what you need to kind of drive down so onwards and upwards to continue on my mission to pick up something which you will find out when I have it alrighty so I ended up staying in Colgaro last night at the uh, caravan park I got too late to push on any further and try and find somewhere to camp. And I wasn't gonna be driving through the night again, like I did the night before, uh, just because of the risk of the roof strikes. So now I'm on my way to my final destination of the day, uh, which I'll tell you about when I get there. Got about three hours and 14 minutes to go around there. Um, so it's a yeah, short drive today compared to uh, yesterday. It's what, 9.15. Got out at a reasonable hour. Um, I packed everything up in the car and then I went to get my keys and I didn't have my keys because I'd rolled them up in the swag. <laughs> so it was lucky for me that I could actually get to them with the swag still in the swag bag just by undoing a clip. So. Yeah, that wasn't too bad. Um, decent night's sleep. Had a bunch of teenagers next to me carrying on for a little bit. Um, then I think they realised I was in bed and they quietened down, which was good. Um, but yeah, it's right by the highway, so you're dealing with road trains and stuff coming past and uh, waking you up. So I woke up probably about four or five times uh, during the night, but slept all right still pretty tired though could have slept some more for sure so um yeah i'll get back with you i might stop in at earl dunder and uh yeah get some fuel if i need it probably should give it a top up probably be an exorbitant amount as it usually is uh out in remote australia what did i pay two dollars 29 a liter i think it was yesterday so 
I'm expecting this place to be between $2.50 and $3 a litre of fuel, of diesel, so not cheap. Um, but yeah, now, you know, we're in the Northern Territory now, so the scenery starts to change, and I'll show you more of that when I uh, come across it. Alrighty, so I did say that I would uh, jump back on and show you the change in scenery. So uh, there's some really cool stuff to see. So over this side, don't know if you're able to see it. Wait till we go past here. So Mount Connor over there, which is really cool. And, and yeah. I would have stopped at the lookout back there, but there was just way too many people around. And I've got a tour bus behind me, heading out to where I'm heading to right now. So, um, yeah, pretty boring drive. We've got an hour to go. And um, yeah, plenty of, plenty of vehicles ahead of me. Lots of caravans and the utes towing them but yeah this is pretty much the scenery now so not a whole lot here to see at the moment um, but yeah i'll report back uh, when we get into where i'm going so I'll keep persisting so yeah an hour to go is not bad um yeah there's only a short day today which is good so awesome Back soon. This is Uluru guys, pretty awesome spot. Uh, what is it, about 10 o'clock in the morning now, so it looks pretty cool. We're gonna get a fair bit of wind noise, but we'll check it out and see how we go. So, so that's it there. I'm gonna take us in a bit closer and uh, we'll check it out. And I'll show you how big it is up close because from here, it doesn't do it justice. But this thing is 836 meters tall. Uh, it's pretty big. So we'll head in a bit closer and we'll uh, check it out. And um, then we'll head out to Carter Judah. All right, so we're here. Um, I'll show you on this side of it. It's a 10 and a half K walk around it. 
Not something I'm going to be doing this trip, but uh, maybe I'll do that in the future. So, she's quite big when you're right up to it. This point just here was where the climb used to be. You can see the trail marks that go right up the top. Oh uh, yeah, that's what's since been removed. So, all right, on to Carter Judah, and let's go and do a two hour walk for the Valley of the Winds. Very hard work. Jeez, oh, I'm really unfit. But yeah, pretty awesome up here though. Worth it. Worth the pain. All right, first look out. You know what? I might push on to the next one. 1.6 k's. So we'll have a drink and drink and then we'll get going. Real windy down here too. Need of steps. I think they're making a path. Right, I'm here, got another K to go, and then I'm going to come back again. So I'm going to go to Dana look Lookout. Nice little water hole. back it's pretty full on I'm unfit <laughs> but I uh, yeah, got the look out I was going to and I'm gonna head back to the car and grab some lunch all right let's see how I did so I went to the second lookout which is here Karangana lookout so Karangana lookout was a grade 4 difficult 5.4 K return trip so I'm not as unfit as I thought I was. Not bad. Definitely wouldn't do the whole thing though, not right now. But if I was a bit fitter, I'd do it again. Anyway, off we go back to camp. All right, that was a grade four uh, walk. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty unfit. And I'll sleep well tonight. So time to head off now, um, back to camp and uh, get some food. It's one o'clock in the afternoon now, almost. So time to get some food happening and relax and probably do some washing prior to me. Well, I've got another night, I guess, or another day. So I might just chill tomorrow. We'll see how we go. I might do my washing either today or tomorrow. Um, and yeah, then I'll be on to Kings Canyon. Um, yeah, should be good. And uh, I've got to go and to just get my thing that I come up here for. All right, so the reason I came to Uluru was to pick up a stubby holder that was stolen out of my uh, Prado when it was down the ravine. My issue now is that they don't have the design that there was there two years ago. So 
the uh, lady behind the counter seems to think I might have picked it up down at El Dunda. So uh, on my way back through, I'll pull into El Dunda because I'll need to get fuel. And uh, we'll find out if they have that actual stubby holder or not. So the plot thickens. So I'm leaving Uluru now and I'm on my way to Kings Canyon. Probably not going to walk it because I can barely walk after doing the Carter Judo uh, hike. But uh, yeah, we'll see how we go. Um, from there, I'm not sure which way I'm going to go. I'm either going to do the loop, which I can't remember the name of right now, or I'm going to head back down to El Dunda and head back down the Udna Data track. So I haven't decided what I'm doing yet, but uh, yeah, we'll see how we go. And uh, on the way, we move. So this morning, well, last night at camp, I heard this flapping in the trees. So, um, and that flapping happened to be a bird. I thought, oh yeah, they're just roosting for the night. And I, get up this morning and I still hear the flapping. I'm like, well, what's going on? And I found this bird was hanging by its leg up in the tree. It was a spin of, uh, spin, spin effects pigeon. It was a um, crested pigeon, like the one on my Instagram photos. Uh, I saw one yesterday with a stick stuck around its leg and I couldn't get it. Um, it was flying around with it. And then I think that's the same one that's now trapped up in a tree. So I let the park staff know um, at the campground and they're going to go and get it down and free it, hopefully. So it looked pretty tired and it was pretty bloody cold overnight. It was a wind chill of minus 0 0.4 degrees Celsius. So it was below freezing last night. Yeah, I'm doing it right now. So on our way and uh, let's see what Kings Canyon's like. It's, here it's supposed to be pretty spectacular. I'll uh, be back with you when I get to Curtin Springs, I guess. All right, just done my good deed for the day. Number two, uh, stopped in a Curtin Springs and I saw this uh, car towing a big dual axle uh, caravan and they're making a hell of a racket. And they pulled in and they are blown the uh, left-hand rear tire clean off the rim, destroyed the rim completely because it's an alloy. And uh, yeah, they don't know how long they've been going like that for, so. Um, I did the right thing and I offered some help and some tools and I had to cut all the steel belts off from around the axle. The uh, wool bearing was all right. Um, they had a spare which had 12 PSI in it so I just went and pumped up all their tyres using the onboard air that I have. And uh, now I'm on my way again. So I'm now going to be an hour later heading to Kings Canyon but that's fine. So. Uh, they were very thankful, they offered me a coffee, but I, decli I politely declined, I'm like, no, nah, I've got to get going, so, but, you know, uh, hopefully they sort out a spare tyre. Um, what was else? Also the uh, right hand rear had a leaky valve as well, so, uh, that was a problem. So, offered the tools to that too and tighten that up and, uh, yeah, they should be, should be better now. So, we'll see how they go. Um, I asked if they had an air compressor, they just had one that plugged into a cigarette lighter, so um, they would want to keep an eye on it now. Lucky they hadn't done any wheel bearings or uh, wheel studs on either side, just the low pressures and heat and everything. So anyway, I'm going to keep going and uh, check out Kings Canyon.
I've turned off the Lasseter Highway onto Laritja Road, and this is going to take me up to Kings Canyon. So this was the road I saw a camel on a couple of years ago. I'm going to keep my eyes peeled, and if I see one, I'll try and get some footage of it and some photos. But yeah, that was pretty rare to see, and I know that they were culling them um, because they're a pest. So if, for those who don't know, we had camels uh, brought into Australia to build the telegraph line between Adelaide and Darwin. Possibly some of the rail work too, I'm not sure. But um, yeah, when they'd finished with them, they let them go. So then we ended up having the uh, camel pests, I guess. So um, yeah, we'll see what I come, come across on the way up here. So yeah, the other thing I did was I pulled over and uh, took some photos of Mount Connor, or one photo to be exact, and there was a whole group of zebra finches there. So they're another native bird to Australia. Um, you don't see them back home at all, back in Adelaide. They're like a Central Australia thing. So yeah, they were having a drink around one of the water tanks, and I managed to get pretty close with my big zoom lens and uh, grab some photos. Scenery is starting to change finally. Um, I'll get a clear spot up here and you'll see what I'm looking at. It's getting late in the afternoon. Got 52 k's to go by the looks of it. It's a half an hour drive. And uh, yeah, I'll flip the camera around and show you what I'm looking at. There's a big range out there. Uh, that range goes way down the end there as well so hard to see from here but hopefully I'll uh, get up top of this hill and uh, we'll be able to see it uh, kind of stopped at the end there not sure if we're heading into that or one down further I would say it's probably in there. I assume that's where Kings Canyon is. Um, yeah, we'll find out. Never been here. And um, yeah, it's the first time I've ever been down this road. So not too far off. It's the Watanaka National Park. I believe that's how you say it. Correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments. Um, but my pronunciation of Aboriginal places is pretty terrible most of the time. So, unless it's a real common place, but yeah, I've never been here, so I wouldn't know. So, hopefully, we get in here, I'll uh, grab a camp spot once I'm in. Hopefully, they got one, and uh, and we'll go from there.
right, good morning everyone. So yeah, good night's sleep. And uh, now I'm heading down to King Canyon and I'm gonna see what my body will let me do today. So um, if I can't do the reverse walk, that way I'm not going up a 500 step really steep ascent, um, then I'll just do the creek walk, I think. So uh, we'll see how we go. I'm gonna head down there now and uh, I'll take you along for the ride. Here we go. All right. I should take a photo of you going up there, Jamie. Just turn around. This gives the old thighs a workout. Better call Swag up. Tell him to come and pick me up.
It's brutal. Yeah, let me huff it and puff it. All right. Thank God they've made a few steps here for us, Jamie. <laughs> Plenty of options. Elevator would be nice. Yeah. If she gets steep up here. Just jet, doesn't it? Almost halfway. Oh god! Is <laughs> <laughs> that it? Alright, I'm struggling too, guys. <laughs> oh. Beautiful view, though. These kids just flying up here. Yep. Think nothing of it. They don't have the body weight to carry us by. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Bit brutal, isn't it? Just a bit. <laughs> <laughs> are getting a workout. This is how close I am to the edge here, so I could be very careful. Very cool canyon though.
Rookie and bumpy. Really cool scenery though. Oh, keep going. Oh, very cool. What's this? Climb up here. Too many people around behind me. So, this is Kings Canyon and uh, lots of climbing at the moment. So, not bad, though. not too bad. See how my uh, back and legs hold up. I'll be back to you when I come across another cool looking spot. How you going? Hey, how you doing? Good. I'm su I've survived the steep climb, so I'm doing all right. Because <laughs> Carter Judah, I turned around and come back. Oh, really? Yeah. So I'm doing alright, I'm getting fitter I think. <laughs> oh that one's oh, I was gonna say that's my jacket. Yeah. Stairs. Oh. What a view, though. Beautiful. Picturesque. That's all I'm, all I'm going to say is it's picturesque. It's 
water holes down here and everything. Very cool. Lots of coral down here. That's for sure. Garden of Eden section and heading back around the top here again a little bit more climbing nothing too crazy I'm either not gonna be able to move tomorrow or uh, I'll be okay my, my legs aren't killing me right now but my shins are still a bit sore from doing Carter Judah um, but we'll see how we go A little tropical through here. Cool. Work my way around here without rolling an ankle. Down this way. Right away. Not too bad. I can probably another hour to go. And uh, I'll be back at the car. All right, so there's another track you can do. Um, if you're an avid hiker and you're kitted to camp tonight. So you got the Giles track here. There's two days, one way, 22 kilometers by foot. Not real keen on doing anything like that anytime soon. But uh, yeah, we'll keep pushing on. Um, and get back to the cruiser and head back to camp and make some lunch. Just conquered the uh, Kings Canyon six kilometer walk. Um, 
So yeah, I'm gonna head back to camp now, make some lunch and just relax for a bit, I think. And then I'll go and grab some dinner tonight um, in the Outback Barbecue Grill place there. And um, then yeah, I'll get ready for the next leg of the trip. So it's been good so far, I've enjoyed it. Um, yeah, that was pretty full on that first bit. But yeah, once you once you go past the leg burn, you're all right. How I'm gonna hold up tomorrow, I don't know. So anyway, onwards we go. Good morning, guys. So today is the day I do the Marini Loop. So you have to buy a permit. It's whole six dollars fifty, and this is supposed to be pretty corrugated and rough. So and it's on Aboriginal land. So you do need a permit for it, you can't just go and drive it. You can get the permit from the Kings Canyon Resort. So, um, yeah, this is gonna take me around to the McDonnell Ranges, or the West McDonnell National Park as well, over that way, and then into Alice. So, um, yeah, it's cool. there's a few people heading down this way, so it should be all right. Um, been told that I have to drop my tire pressures, it's pretty corrugated, so. Um, we'll see what, what it's like when we get there. I'll decide on my tyre pressures and we'll go through that. So let's get going and uh, see where today takes us. On the Marini Loop now, and I've just come up the range and there was a dingo standing on the road, but I wasn't filming it, which is kind of annoying. Didn't even think about putting the camera on. Um, but yeah, got up to this lookout here and you can hear him howling in the background there. So you might get that on film from what I just uh, showed you all of the uh, area. Yeah, I'm gonna keep on going and uh, see what else I can find out here. Just drop the tire pressures now to 30 psi because the corrugations are pretty bad. I'll show you those in a sec. And um, yeah, we'll be on our way. So as you can see, these are the corrugations in the road here, which are not, not great. I just went through a big one and the car went everywhere. It started going all squirrely. So I'm like, no, I've got to change that out. I'm going to put it in four high for this as well. And, and we'll keep going. Cruiser's here, looking pretty good. Um, yeah, so we'll see where it takes us. There's a bunch of campsites out here as well. Um, so we'll see where we go. If I end up on a uh, overnight camp out here somewhere, or if I just uh, keep pushing on for the night. So there you go, guys. All right, let's get moving. All right, so I'm cruising down the Marini Loop at the moment, and uh, cruise is going pretty well. I just thought I'd stop, dump some footage onto the laptop and check out some of the scenery while we're doing that. This is 10 minutes to copy it over, 60 gig. So yeah, this is the uh, Marini Loop, this is the road. And there's a rocky mountainous outcrop that goes the whole way down. As you see, it's just red dirt. So, cruiser is going sweet. No issues. Um, yeah, not really much to report. It's going fine. 
pick myself up a new sticker. So I'm going to start putting stickers up now for all the places I end up going to. So there is Kings Canyon because I've done that one. So um, yeah, I'm going to sticker the windows as I see places. I didn't pick one up from Uluru though, which I'm a bit disappointed about. But I'll see what I can get elsewhere for that. Um, other than that, yeah, scenery beautiful on this side too. So it's just a big open grassland surrounded by some ranges. So it's really nice. If you get a chance to come out here to the Marini Loop, let's just come in and check it out because it's well worth it just for the scenery. Time to go and check out uh, this lookout. See what it's all about, eh? Um, so just having a quick read before I went back and got the camera. So this is a sacred Aboriginal site used for ceremonial gatherings and um, welcome to outsiders back in the olden times when uh, also a place to gather and get food from as well. So. I'll uh, show you in here. So, a very sacred place. We pronounce it wrong properly too. It's Noulu, it's pronounced. So, this goes down here. Just shows some of the uh, area. This is the map, unlike here, information. So there's a lookout up here, and there's another one over this way, so let's go check them out. And uh, have a bit of a walking break after driving for so long this morning. And uh, we'll see, see where it all goes. I haven't done enough walking, but you know what? If I can do six Ks, I'm sure I can handle 300 meters. It's been a good trip so far. So we'll be doing a bush camp tonight as well. But yeah, we'll see where we go. Right, so this is a crater, a comet. Okay, a comet hit here. Comet blasts into flat layers of rock, sending out powerful shock waves. Fragments of the rock were held into the air and fell to form the crater around the impact core. About 20 million years ago, the outer crater rim had been destroyed by erosion. Today, only the near vertical rock layers at the centre of the base blast remain. Oh wow, so it's bigger than what it was. That's cool. 
So all around us here is an impact site from a comet. But this is only like the center of the blast site. That's pretty cool. So Nerulu has endured millions of years of erosion. Once a colossal crater hundreds of meters above the plains, almost all the original outer structure has eroded. Oh wow. The inner core is 5 k's in diameter. It stores little with shattered cones which can be observed in the area. It was studied, ge geolo yeah. it was studied geologically in the 1950s with debate over its origin. Finally resolved in the late 1960s. It is the most studied impact structure in Australia and has been mapped in considerable detail. So I show here, this is a Google Maps. Um, Google Maps or satellite image. So, oh, keep walking, this, this is interesting. Glad I came out here. It's pretty wild. Flies. Are we going to cop it down the Uden data track with the flies? But I do have a fly net, so that's all right. So, what do you guys think of this area? Not bad. Oh, look at that. You know, this is just just the wall of the impact crater. It used to be hundreds of meters tall. Not so much now. That's only the direct blast zone. I'm gonna have to jump on uh, Google and have a look at this site on the satellite imagery, I reckon. Definitely, definitely something different, that's for sure. Do this hike up, I guess. Can't be as, as bad as yesterday, right? But it should be a good view. think that this was formed millions of years ago by a meteorite. It's pretty freaking cool. And it's not all of it either. So all right, time to go back down, grab a drink and then uh head on out of here. So I was up there to get that whole view. That's pretty sweet. All right. Make my way back. There's my last lot of hiking I'm doing for this trip. Unless I get to check out one 
at another campsite, but we'll see. Um, yeah, back to the car, take those rough corrugations out, and and uh, then onwards we go to my campsite for the night, and I'll show you that one when I get there. Off we go. So I'm heading through to McDonald's Ranges right now, and it's a really nice drive. I'm um, back on the blacktop, so no more unsealed roads for a little bit, and until I get back into SA, I don't think. So if that changes, I'll let you know, but yeah, I'll see you at tonight's campsite. All right, guys, um, I found a slight problem, and that is camping rules have changed in Northern Territory this year. Um, back when I was up here last time, you could camp anywhere and you didn't need to pay for anything. But now I've discovered that there's signs at the entrance to every camp spot um, that bookings must be made and paid for online. And there's no set uh, um, camping spot in the sites. So my problem is I have no phone reception, so I can't book anything. Uh, which is a slight issue and um, I'm going to have to figure something out for tonight maybe head back towards Alice Springs get some phone reception and book another campsite down the highway um, so yeah it looks like I'm going to be rocking into camp late yet again and um, yeah that's where we're at at the moment so that's a bit of a bummer you know, the reason I come up to the Territory in the past was because you didn't have to pay for camp spots. Just like over in Victoria, you don't have to either. So, but you know, up here, you know, there's like Ellery Creek, big hole, turn off. And uh, and there'll be a sign on the entrance in there that says that you have to pay for it. So, uh, it's unfortunate um, that it's come down to that, really. But can only do what you can only do so all right i'm gonna keep driving and i'll uh, let you know when i make it to camp all right update time guys uh i'm not too far out of eldunda as far as i know it's probably about 25 or 30 k's from the last sign i saw um it's been a pretty long day i've been driving for a little bit over 11 hours 708 p.m it's dark, I don't have spotlights, I don't like driving at night time in the country due to kangaroos, um, as they are pretty hard to avoid. I do have the bull bar on, but I still don't want to hit one. And uh, yeah, once I get to Eldunda, I'll have a five minute break, and then push on to Colgara. Um, Colgara, I'll probably get there for about quarter past eight, something like that, along those lines. And uh, then I'll set up for the night uh, again in that same campground that I set up with on the way up. Um, hopefully they should they should accept the late book in, but that shouldn't be a problem. It's only an unpowered site, so I don't need power. And uh, yeah, that's about where I'm at at the moment. All right, guys. So I found what I was looking for. So last night on the way through. I found a missing stubby holder at Eldunda. So they do tours from out to Uluru from there, so that's where I must have grabbed it from. So this is definitely the one. I'm pretty certain anyway. Central Australia on it, a couple of camels, or a few camels on it, and Uluru and the uh, Northern Territory logo. I'm stoked with that, it's good. So just uh, backing up some footage now and I'll be on the road and headed down to Udnadatta. All right, just hit the SA border with Northern Territory. There's a sign over there. Um, got 160 k's to Marla and then I'm heading out to Udnadatta. So 
Uh, we'll see how far we get down the track tonight. Um, should be interesting, we'll see how we go. All right guys, just about to start the Unidata data track. Drop on tire pressures, I'm 24 at the front, 26 at the rear. Uh, the road sign says open to four wheel drives only. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be pretty corrugated I would say, just looking at the road surface here now. Um, this does not look great at all. What about if we look at it back this way? So, that's pretty corrugated. Cruiser's ready to rock. Been really reliable this whole trip. Absolutely love it. Alright guys, made it to my campsite. So this is the one that Uncle Pete and I stayed at last time. So the 90 series was parked there and Uncle Pete's was parked over here. But it is so overgrown now and this was two years ago. Um, it's unfortunate that you can't really park over in this area anymore. But yeah, that's where we had our fire. But also the ground's sort of eroded and angling down so you can't even set up and sleep there now. I've got a bunch of birds flying over. Um, yeah, so I've decided I'm sitting up here because this is probably the flattest ground out here at the moment. I might have a little bit of a fire, we'll see. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So that's where we're at at the moment. Um, yeah, I'm keen, keen to get set up because it's starting to cool down. And being back in SA now, the weather is a lot colder. So, um, yeah, we're going to get it set up, cook some dinner, and uh, possibly have a little bit of a fire tonight. All right, that's dinner done and dusted. Just about 7.30 at night. There is not a whole lot to do around here. I'll uh, show you the rig from afar, and just how I'm all set up at the moment. Um, gives you an idea. So, can't really see a whole lot, but I'm set up here, obviously in front of the cars here, so just set up here, give myself some light, and just set up a little bit back towards the car, at the back of it here. Um, just have my light on here. This is just my headlamp. If I can get this to turn around, there we go. So I was just using my headlamp to light up the back of the car. And then I just got another light. I just um, Velcro to the side there, just to give me some light over here, just to give me a bit more safety. Um, I am solo out here by myself. Um, and because of that, I've got my inReach in my swag and I've armed myself with something as well, just in case. 
I should be all right though, so it shouldn't be a problem. Um, tomorrow, onwards to Coward Springs. I'm gonna have a dip down there. Um, from there, I'll check out Lake Air, and then I'll see where I'm at, whether I get another uh, campsite somewhere, or if I just head straight home. So, uh, it just depends on the time constraints. So, we'll see what happens. But I'm off to bed, guys, and I'll see you in the morning. All right, guys, I'm all packed up. That's a pretty wet night, actually. Um, all the swag was damp, so I decided I'll have a look under the mattress. That's all wet. Um, yeah, not fun. Just been waiting for it to dry off now, and it's probably about 8.30ish. So getting a bit late on the road. Um, but yeah, it's time for me to head on out of here. So yeah, it's a good campsite. Um, I may post this one up, we will see. I do like to keep some to myself, especially ones that aren't used like this one. You know, obviously it's used, but no one else here at all. So it was a very quiet night, which was a little bit sketchy, but you know, is what it is. Anyway, anyway, let's get back on the road and we'll go check out Lake Air and Coward Springs. So I decided not to check out Coward Springs. There's way too many people there. I'd never be able to get in for a dip. And I was, as I was going past it, someone else pulled up anyway. So I just stopped to have a quick bite to eat. Um, and I'll keep pushing on. And I'm probably gonna make it home by tonight. Another eight hours driving. Um, but we'll see. If I get too tired, then I'll stop in at one of the stations and have a stay there overnight. But we'll see how we go. Anyway. Let's push onwards and upwards.
just arrived at Lake Air South. Um, yeah, she's wet, that's for sure. It's pretty awesome. I'll come show you. Thank you guys.